Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn, I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Guess what? I'm super excited because I found another astrologer. It's like I just wander the streets going, are you an astrologer? Do you know anything about politics? Because I have questions. So I found this great astrologer. Let me introduce you to Lorraine at Scorpio Rising Astrology. And before I let her talk, I'm going to talk just for a second because I want to tell you this is so important. She just said to me, if Biden wasn't president, he would be a psychic. <laughs> Can you believe this? It has something to do with him having a lot of Scorpio. I don't really understand. The other thing that she's going to tell us today is there's some really crazy, uh, that's my word, frankly, astrology that's happening in just a few days on February 14th that ha has not happened. This particular astrology has not happened in like over 140 years. And that's why it's really important that we're talking to her today. And there's more. There's more, you guys. And there's some astrological connections or impacts that are going to hit Biden and Trump and the royal family. Now, if you don't think this is interesting, I know, pause this video and get some popcorn, get a drink, get your blankie, get all settled in. Let's go. Hey, Lorraine, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you? I am doing great, Susan. Thank you for asking me to be on your channel. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's exciting. I just love, um, I love astrology and I love to hear what you guys have to say. Now, if you guys want to know about Lorraine, go to the direct to the description down below and I will put her email address in it. She doesn't have a website. It's a long story where, you know, I, I find these people and I basically lure them out of their, their caves. You know, I wanted to go into a cave and, and they wouldn't let me. So I'm, I'm getting the rest of everybody who is in the cave and I'm dragging you guys out. If you're interested in, her, in an astrology reading, she does do them. I had her do mine. It was phenomenal. Very helpful. So if you want to know more, please email her. The information is down below. Now, Lorraine, tell us about whatever you want to start with. I It's also juicy. I cannot wait to hear more about this. Well, the first thing which is happening this week, as a matter of fact, is Mars is going to be meeting Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius for the first time in 140 years. Now, this is big stuff because when you have an aspect like Pluto, which is powerful and transformative and can be earth shaking, meets up with Mars that just kicks you in the butt, okay? And Mars is very powerful and it, it it's action oriented. And so those two, um, aspects together, those two planets together can be very explosive and powerful, but not always negative. There's an always for everything. There's a positive and a negative. Okay. So the last time, Susan, that this happened in 1885, I think something like that, 140 years ago, the volcano Krakatoa erupted. Okay. Yeah. Now, don't go digging your, your survival um, shelters in the ground right now, because I don't think that's going to happen again. Put your little hats on. I, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm getting a crash helmet for this channel. I swear to God. I swear. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. But what I do think, and, and this energy is like from now right through the end of the week, it's exact on February 13th, 14th. Okay. But you're going to feel it. You know, I think a lot of people are already starting to feel it. So what could that mean? I mean, that could be tremendous creative energy that somebody is experiencing. Um, it could also be a clash with somebody. It all depends on the aspects that this particular energy is making to your chart, okay? So <laughs> I, I did take a look. And well, the first thing I want to say is I believe that this energy is probably going to play out in the Middle East. I think something big is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's my personal intuitive feeling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean nothing else is going to happen in the world. I don't think Krakatoa is going to explode again. I really think that this is going to be some kind of very significant incident that can happen anywhere in the world. Could be Ukraine, could be Middle East. I mean, we're a mess globally, you know, so really could be anywhere. But I think what you're going to see is that this energy is sort of going to come up and be a catalyst that the UN is going to have to do something, you know, 
somewhere, either Ukraine or Middle East or wherever it is. That's interesting. The UN, United Nations versus NATO. Uh, I just want to say really quickly, because I saw way back when Ukraine first erupted, I saw the blue helmets and I didn't know what they are. And people were like, that's the UN helmets. And I've just been waiting. I'm like, I don't know if that's going to come to fruition or what is going on. But it's interesting that you bring in specifically the UN because no one, no one is talking about the UN getting involved. And that would be peacekeeping, correct? Correct. Correct. So that would require some peace. That would require, like, for example, Biden getting in there and really doing what he does best. I mean, this man is a negotiator. And... You know, he has a lot of stress going on in his chart, but my God, he's the leader of the free world. OK, you know, yeah. and um, I'll, I'll get into that a little later. But I, I think you're going to see that people are going to really have to step up now and do something. It's getting really bad. Getting out of control. Out of out of control. And the same could be said for Ukraine. Right. That's true. So you feel like this energy that's happening, might I add, around Valentine's Day, some of you guys are going to have the explosive Valentine's Day you always wanted. That's right. <laughs> Where that's your right. underwear gets blown off of your body or <laughs> or you're probably going to get a divorce. I don't know what's going to happen, but it is Valentine's Day. So take heed. OK, now <laughs> I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm single. Thank God. Thank God I'm single. Uh, Afefe with Touched by Tarot and I are doing a live Valentine's video. I have not announced that yet. I want to see your hats on. (laughs) We're we're, going to be answering your questions. I'm kind of afraid now that I've had Lorraine on here to tell me what the hell is going to happen. Okay, so go ahead. Back to the politics. Back to the politics. Yeah. So I looked at Donald Trump's chart. Oh, God. Did you put on your hazmat suit? All right. Yeah, you know, it it wasn't fun. Um, (laughs) You know. You have a better, you have a more measured look at all of this than I do. You're not as, you're not as dramatic. Let's just face, I'm I'm just going to call it what it is. Go ahead, dear. Let us know. Well, that's okay. Well, Donald Trump, first of all, I have to tell you, he has natally in his birth chart, Pluto and Mars in the 12th house of secrets um institutions criminality the mafia (laughs) all things icky but it can also be a very spiritual house negative and positive right it depends on how you use your planet okay i'm going to go out on a limb here and say he has not been using the higher form of scorpio okay and um he he really that house represents for for um, entertainment purposes only a lot of um, desire to break the rules, to oh. do things that other people would consider illegal. I'm trying to be very selective with my words. Other people <laughs> would consider, I like the way you say other people, like let's see the Supreme Court, maybe not, the 11th Circuit, exactly. maybe not, <laughs> J- Jack Smith, maybe so, you know, okay, I get it. That's That's yep. interesting. I like it. Yep. So he has he has Pluto and Mars in that 12th house. And that's kind of, may I say, icky. It's a it's a really professional astrological term. (laughs) It's it's really icky if you misuse the energy. So he's got Mars and Pluto um, right on the cusp of his sixth house, which is health. Okay. I thought you were going to say hell. I just did. I, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know anything about astrology. I thought all of a sudden there's a house named hell. Okay. Hell. I think hell. there's some information that's going to be coming to light that's going to cause him to absolutely have a temper tantrum, a meltdown. Um, it's rage. It's absolute rage that can affect his health negatively. We may not know about it. Okay. But we I may think- not know about the information that no, yeah, may not enraged. May not know that he's throwing ketchup on the wall again. Okay. Right, right, right. Do you, yeah. Could this like be an ischemic stroke or like a stroke? Yes. Could this like like produce like some kind of like I just see like a boom, like a pop? Well, it's gonna be rage. I feel like he has something else going on anyway, in that is more or less like a wasting type of disease. It's it's it, I'll just come out and say it. He has Neptune in that eighth house. He's mentally not with it. Okay. okay. He's already okay. got some, some, okay. Some problems. 
Um, and he will see this. This is what this is going to do is feed on his paranoia. OK. And Donald Trump is dangerous when he's backed into a corner. Yes, I agree. And I have a feeling this has something to do, allegedly, with money laundering mm -hmm. or um, some kind of criminal thing that Jack Smith is going to is going to hit him with. Eliminate, eliminate, elucidate. That's what they just said. It's going to shine a light, shine a light. Shine on a it. light. Yes. So I don't want to go too deep in this because I get it. Uh, but could, gosh, do I want to do this? I want to do this, but I don't want to do it. Okay. So Donald Trump himself said, it's, it, we're 100%, America 100% is going to experience a terrorist attack. He has said that himself. Yeah, he has. 100%. So if you add that, because I was coming in the house yesterday and I got this impression about something happening. And then you're talking about this kind of explosive energy. Um, to me, it feels like a releasing of energy, like the energy is building, building, like Krakatoa. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It feels like the energy is building and building and building and then boom. Now, I agree, like this could happen many different ways. Maybe Jack Smith says, here's a new indictment. Maybe Alvin Bragg says, here's a new indictment. Maybe there's a new investigative reporting that happens, or maybe something erupts in the Middle East or in Ukraine, and and the inner the energy is gonna come out. It's gonna it come is. out one way. It's just just like um, I don't know what that is. Like when you have steam under the ground and it just erupts. I mean, that's kind of like a volcano. Volcano, right? volcano. Yeah. 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 And and I mean he his Pluto and his Mars are not handled well. Leo is really, it can be the sign, it can be an egotistical sign, it can be many things. I'm, please, Leos, don't write me. Um, you know, depends on how you use the energy, but you put Pluto and Mars in that sign of Leo, it's very egotistical. This is something, this could also be the judgment coming down from Ergonon on um, the payout, because that's due any time now. Right. Okay? That's so right. that I could just got send, chills. Yeah, that could send him into an apoplectic fit. And yes. with Neptune going through that eighth house of his, that's other people's money, that's big money. I believe he is going bankrupt, allegedly. Me too. No, I, yeah. I believe that too. Yes. And that will probably They're happen. They're going to take everything from him. They that's will. why I don't think that that's what, exactly why I don't think he's going to make it alive to his first criminal trial because the money is going to take him out. It, the, the idea of losing his business license, of losing all this money, he lost all that money to E. Jean Carroll. He's going to have to put up a lot of money in bond to even just go back and retry that case. He that There goes any money that he had. Um, yeah, Alvin Bragg, even, everybody else has taken his money. Yeah, he's not even rich. Okay, I mean, really, if he was the billionaire that he claimed to be, he would have said, here's my IRS forms, everybody. Look, you look right. at me, look at he, me. Oh, he would be happy. He is. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. That it's is exactly true. who he is. He has he has a huge ego. His his son is elevated in his chart. He needs to be seen. He needs to be admired. He feeds off of adulation and adoration because he never got any as a child. Now I'm playing psychiatrist. But I mean, it's in his chart. Um, you know, Pluto and Mars in that 12th house, that's the house of secrets, too. And and it's it's um, all things like prostitution, sex trafficking, all kinds of things. I believe allegedly that he was abused as a child. Really, and, physically, yeah. sexually, all, emotionally, all the above. I mean, probably probably all of the above. And I believe it was his father. His father. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think he got any warm fuzzies from his mom at no, all. No, 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 no. I don't think so either. Yeah. So so he was predisposed, right? So he came preloaded. He he was he was preloaded, predisposed for this uh choice, you know. He had a pretty interesting life path here. Uh yep. and then they loaded some more on in his childhood and that he chose the path of darkness over the Correct. path of lightness. And uh that wasn't the easiest thing. I mean, he probably chose the easiest thing, right? It wasn't the easiest choice, but he probably chose the path of least resistance, the power. I will get you back. I'll show you who I am. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and then on his father's deathbed, he's over there trying to get the guy to sign off his whole inheritance to him, you know? So yeah, he kind of created the the Frankenstein um, himself. Well, you know, he, here's the thing. I, with astrology, 
it just is what it is, you know? And when Trump first started to make noises that he was going to run for president, I, I didn't know anything about him other than he was a guy on TV I didn't care for very much. But when you look at the astrology, you go, man, this is not someone I want ruling my country or the free world or anything. I don't even want to stand next to him, okay? Because his his chart, and again, like I said, there are choices that we make, just like you said, and we can choose to use our power um, you know, positively and for the greater good, or we can use it for ourselves. And it's it's greed and avarice and um revenge. It's a very it's revenge. A lot of revenge. A lot, a of, lot revenge. of revenge. So yeah. he gets backed into the corner with these things that are going to be illuminating. The guides, my spirit guides keep saying illuminating, illuminating. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's an astrological thing going on that's going to illuminate things, but Pluto. 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 Ah. Pluto's the great illuminator. Pluto. Ah digs beneath the surface and digs up and let's not forget it's in his 12th house of secrets okay and Wh so which one is scorpio or pluto 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 and pluto's Mars. gonna illuminate his secrets i get there slowly y'all but i get there sooner or later <laughs> like the light bulb just went out in this non-astrologer's brain ding dong the witch is dead yeah i mean you know you can't make this stuff up you can't it, make it's just, it's just... I, I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't either. I mean, this is oh. 40 years of, of, you know, just um, learning as you go along, you know, and, um, you know, so anyway, I never based on his chart, I was horrified when he was elected. I mean, absolutely horrified. And, you know, I wanted to dig my my shelter under the ground and put the tin hat on. <laughs> you know, we almost had to. We almost but, had to. Yeah. But so, yeah, I mean, I think we can expect to hear some kind of news um, regarding new charges that um, Jack Smith or Fonnie Willis, somebody is digging up on him. And and again, allegedly, um, I think it has something to do with money laundering or fraud of some kind. Because that's kind of what he does. And then, you know, you add to that this new energy of Pluto and Aquarius. So Donald Trump was the perfect Pluto and Capricorn person. Pluto and Capricorn exposed all the greed and the, the, the corporate power and, you know, um, stepping on the little person to make the old rich white men, you know, richer, right? So he came in at a time when Pluto was doing its thing through Capricorn. And he was really the poster boy for Pluto and Capricorn. Okay. But what's happened now is Pluto has shifted into Aquarius. And this is all new energy. It's humanitarian. And he doesn't know what to do with that. Okay. It, that's foreign to him. All right. And the people now, the masses are going to be wanting someone who's going to do something for them instead of something for him it's not all about trump anymore so or the corporations or the corporations or, or the banks or you know and or even so, the government it's not about anything organized it's about us no. with our pitchforks in the streets i think oh, oh absolutely absolutely and um i mean there's a lot of revolutionary energy going on um when i get to um jupiter and uranus i mean what you say about marching in the streets, we may not have muskets, but we're going to have picket signs, you know, and uh, bullhorns and, and what have you. But um, but yeah, you know, this week is probably not going to be a good week for Donald. Um, and I think it's sort of going to be the light switch that starts his drain circling. OK, yes. Yes. because right after that, we've got the solar eclipse, which is not friendly to him either. Right. Okay? Because wasn't he born on an eclipse? He was born on an eclipse. Is yes, it he true was. what you guys say that sometimes people exit on an eclipse? You know, I haven't had that personal experience okay. reading anyone who has or has it happened to me. I was going to say, thank God you haven't had a personal experience with a Jesus. Okay. Well, I mean, reading somebody who, who, so, you know, I have heard that and I've read that somewhere, but I, I can't tell you based on my experience okay. um, if that is true or not. Okay. However, it's going to be very significant because it is in that eighth house of his money. I think bank loans are going to become due. I think he's going to go bankrupt. I think that the courts are going to, you know, just take everything from him. 
And so that, you know, now listen, this doesn't happen on the day of the eclipse. The, the eclipse energy takes about six months to play out. So he's got a really tough six months coming up, poor Donald. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you add all this together and you can see how this is going to be not a great time for him. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to bring the little wins that he gets. For example, we know the Supreme Court is going to tell him he can be on the on the yeah, ballot. Colorado. You know what? That's OK. That's yeah. OK. I mean, you know, um, so he's going to go out and run with that. And, and he's going to get all blown up and think, hey, I'm wonderful. You know, they can't touch me. Look at me run. Right. You know, um, and that is the problem with Donald is his ego gets in the way of everything. So, um, and it's going to be quite a blow to him when the chips start falling the other way. And now Andre has said this before, and I totally agree. He was protected for years and years and years by Jupiter. Okay. That was his protection. And um, oh, that's what Andre, Andre, the, the astrologer, Yes, yes. So I'm the so people right. know who we're talking about. Andre, yep. uh, remind me his channel name. I can't remember his channel name. Han. Oh, his channel name, Proactive Astrology or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I think he just changed it. Um, yeah, to Proactive Astrology. That's who she's talking about. I just want to let people yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, interesting. He's been saying that Donald has been protected by his Jupiter. So yeah. and Jupiter uh, enlarges things, blows things up, makes things bigger. So his ego got bigger. His largesse got bigger. Maybe even allegedly his criminality got bigger. We don't know. Uh, so now what happened to Jupiter? Did Jupiter leave town? Did Jupiter break up with him? Did Jupiter like, you know, <laughs> slash his tires? I mean, what the hell? Jupiter Probably. changed signs. <laughs> Jupiter left him. Jupiter left that man. Yeah. I yeah. You. Okay. But See, this Jupiter, is how I do astrology. What's Jupiter that? slashed your tires and left town. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, you know, that's oh the thing, God. you know, that's what astro life happens, right? And we go yeah. in, in these cycles and astrology is all about the cycles of life, right? So no one thing could happen. It had to be a combination of Saturn changing signs, Pluto changing signs, Uranus, wh whatever. You know, it, astrology is very complicated, but it tells a great story, you know? And, you know, I have tested it for four, over 40 years and it works, so, you know, I go with what I know and I just know there's no way this man should be leading a Boy Scout troop, let alone the free world. OK, even um, a merry band of hookers. He shouldn't even I, be leading a merry band of forget Boy Scouts. I mean, the man shouldn't be in charge of anything. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. Um, but, you know, this is what the Republican Party wanted. They they okay. wanted a chump that they could say, do this and you'll go, OK. You and know. I think this is our lesson. I mean, he yeah. we needed him to drain the swamp so that we could see how ugly and nasty and we we our aquarium got real dirty. Yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah. he's draining it. We're we're like, oh my god, we got to clean it up. That's and now, now the people, now the power of the people will Absolutely. say, this place is trashed. We need to Absolutely. we need to clean it up. Everybody, everybody's equal. You grab a broom, you grab a mop, you grab a sponge. We're not going to allow. Um, anybody, we're not going to allow this hierarchy. We're going to flatten it. That's right. And that's what Pluto and Aquarius is going to usher in and followed in a couple of years by some of the other larger planets changing signs as well. Okay. And that's a whole different, a whole different um, emphasis on what people are going to be thinking, feeling, wanting, and what's necessary because we're ruining the planet. We're killing each other. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just something has to happen. And so the Aquarian energy is going to be something that the people in Washington, D.C., meaning the politicians yeah. um, who are on the side of corporate. I guess everybody is. I don't know who's what anymore. Democrats, Republicans. I don't know. You know, yeah. but excuse me, it's not going to be about making them richer at no. all. It no. isn't. It's that it's flattening. So, I'm telling it's, it's a flattening. I'm, it I don't is. know how far we're going to take it, but we're going to take it pretty far. Well, it's going to take a long time. I mean, this yeah. is going to take a better part of 25 years before, not before we see anything. We're going to start to see improvement. Already the energy has changed. I think you'll see it. I think you'll see some pretty big 
I feel like we have some pretty big upheavals in the beginning yeah. and then it kind of plateaus and then you have big upheavals and then it plateaus. I don't know well, why. You don't, you don't see change happen without upheaval. There has to be. No. I mean, if we all sat around saying, isn't this great? You know, nothing would ever change. No, nothing ever change. You're right. This is the universe teaching us some cosmic lessons and, you know, get up off the couch, you couch potato, and <laughs> look at what's happening. We're going to lose Miami underwater here in a minute, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, oh do something. Oh, my God, it's true. And so oh what, what happens in response to that is, like, we're all sleepwalking. And so Pluto's taking us by the collar and going, hey, hey, wake up. And then along comes Uranus and Uranus is the planet that shakes you up to wake you up. Okay. And when you have all of these new energies coming in here um, and I'm going to be talking about Jupiter and Uranus in a, in a minute, um, this is a huge wake up call for not just people in the United States, but for the planet. I mean, you know, our planet is gasping. It's just, it's just horrible what we're doing to it, you know? So Pluto's giving us an opportunity. Now, what it's going to do, and this is interesting, it's moving back into Capricorn for a few months from September until just after the election. It's going to give us a chance to look back at all those years of Capricorn and say, hey, how'd you like that? You want more of that? Like a bad dream. Of that, yeah, exactly. Like a bad if dream. you want more of that, don't make me Trump. watch it. Don't make me watch it. <laughs> really? And so really, so more, okay. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I, I was I was focused on the bad dream. So you you just said Capricorn's going to go back into that same energy. This is why we're going to re-experience it, you guys. Capricorn is like Pluto going into Aquarius, and then we're like, oh, things feel better, and then and then it's going to come back, and so that could give the opportunity of banks or corporations or the government or whatever to say yeah we are the power you're sit down and shut up we don't want to hear you but the people have already got a little bit of that energy even if it's just a tiny bit a little bit goes a long way the guides are saying and we're going to be rebellious against that so that might be why this summer we say uh, no we're not going back to that right it's like when your ex comes back and tries to sweet talk you and you're like no get out you're a loser okay so yeah, that's my interpretation of the astrology. Go yeah, ahead. Well, well, Pluto, Pluto, that's exactly what it's doing. And it's going to give us a look just before the election to, to ask us, do you want four more years of, oh. of this? Or are you done, folks? Right? We're done. We're done. But then what's going to happen is, yeah, Jupiter and Uranus are going to meet up. And this is really big, big, big this news. doesn't sound good to me. It sounds like. No, you know, it's listen. Good. It could be good. It can be great, but it okay. can be weird. Okay. <laughs> Again, here we go. Again. Choose your own adventure, uh, Earth. Choose your own adventure, adventure, right. adventure land, Earth. Yeah. Well, it marks a new beginning. Okay. okay. When does so, that happen again? This is happening um, April 20th. Okay. Oh, it's around April. So quickly. Now, what happens is Jupiter and Uranus tend to meet up every 14 years anyway, but it's very rare that it meets up in the sign of Taurus, okay? And just to give you, well, first I'm gonna give you a little background. Jupiter is the planet of expansion and growth um, and, and all things wonderful. And Uranus is, <laughs> Uranus is really difficult to predict. It's the planet of unpredictability, but it's also the planet of revolution and innovation and um, electricity, everything, everything shocking, okay? So when these two planets meet up, you have the abundance of Jupiter connecting with Uranus. Anything can happen. But Jupiter has very benevolent energy with it. So... It can, it can be all these great new inventions that are going to be coming down the pike that we haven't even imagined yet, all right? But it could be the beginning of planting the seeds, okay? Let me tell you, the last time that Jupiter and Uranus met up in Taurus was during May of 1941 during World War II. And in May of 1941, the British captured a German U-boat and they found something called the Enigma machine. What this machine did was help the British crack the code of the Germans and it turned the tide of the war. Oh my God. Now this was like innovative, 
I mean, technological for the times, you know, I know it was this huge computer and, you know, you got to do all this, right? But this is the type of energy that we have. It's for the greater good, though, because it's, it's Jupiter and it's Uranus, okay? These two planets, Uranus rules Aquarius, okay? And Aquarius, again, it's about humanitarianism. Jupiter rules the people. I mean, you know, it's Sagittarius. It's, hey, let's party. You know, it's it's bubbly. But it can also be too much of something, too. So when you have that energy coming together, you can expect people to be uprising, which goes in hand in hand with Pluto and Aquarius, right? People are going to be shook up by something, okay? Whether it's their own personal beliefs or something that happens on SNL. I mean, who knows what it's going to be? It could be anything. But it's a it's a chance for a new start. And it's so significant because if you look back at what happened during World War II, without that Enigma machine, the British would not have won the war. So I think we need an Enigma machine, <laughs> you know, for, for 2024. So this well, energy we'll get one. Maybe this will be the energy to get it. Well, this is the thing, because, I mean, Uranus ro rules things that we haven't even imagined yet, that are futuristic, okay? So, again, folks, don't expect that on April 20th, all these wonderful things are going to happen, okay? I mean, I've had people come back to me and say, hey, I waited until midnight, nothing happened. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's not quite how it works. <laughs> That wasn't me. I didn't do that. No, it, that wasn't you, Susan. You were very good. <laughs> you were very good. But, um, you know, so it's it's also it's also about spirituality because Jupiter does rule spirituality. So I, I think, you, yeah, yes, it does. Rules um, the ninth house of spirituality, long distance travel, long distance with the mind. We talked about that in, in your chart, right? right yeah, you know? yeah. And philosophy. And I think that it's going to be sort of like a wake up call to people um, sort of like us who have been kind of hiding our spiritual um, uh -oh. uh, knowledge under a rock uh -oh. or in a cave, as you said, uh -oh. I was <laughs> right. But I think that there's going to be a shift, a huge shift and people are just done. They're just done with that Capricornian energy and, you know, and all of that. Now, Taurus rules the land, okay? Physically, it rules land and its resources, crops, animals, you know, all kinds of stuff as well as that, as well as shipping. So what can that shipping. what can that possibly be? Okay, first thing that comes to my mind with land is the border, okay? Yeah. Something can happen with border control. The Im immigration could be great, could be wonderful, could be shocking, okay? The other thing is shipping. And I know there's a lot... Shipping There's energy around shipping for me. There's yeah. energy around a border and shipping. Yeah. So we know that the Red Sea, we know that there's a lot of really narrow areas that our merchant ships have to traverse um, yeah. that are very close to land. So that's very interesting. Go ahead, dear. Um, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I was going to say, I think it's, it could very likely be somewhere over in the Middle East there. And I don't know my geography that well, but you said Red Sea and I go, okay. <laughs> you know, know, me too. I, I know. But but I do know that, I do know that there's been a lot of problems with shipping and they, they have missiles, missiles shot over, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we could also see something like, again, Ukraine um, might, now the, on the good side, Ukraine might take back some of its land. Yeah, yeah. You know, so this could this could work in good in a ways shocking too. way, in a shocking exactly you know, like you hear the newscaster say in a shocking twist of events, mm -hmm. a shocking you know event, whatever. So that that's those are some of the things you could hear. But again, not necessarily in, maybe in April, maybe not. That's right. That's right. I mean, this is such a huge event. I mean, the war wasn't over on May 7th, 1941 or whatever day it was, go. right? There you go. It took years. It took years, but it turned and We didn't even tide. know. We didn't. We didn't. I mean, and I don't but, think the public knew that we found an Enigma machine, right? That was oh, kept no, no. secret. No, it was top secret. And as a matter of fact, the people who worked on it were, were signed to a confidentiality agreement for life. And we didn't even find out about this until I don't know how many years ago, but recently when they all died. I mean, you know, nobody was left. And oh, so it was declassified. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, we could be working on things technologically like 
UFO type things. Yeah, I was wondering if that could come into yeah. the equation in some way. Yeah, it, it, it will. It will. I mean, not quite yet, um, but it's going to. Pluto and Aquarius definitely is going to bring that. It's shining the light. It's bringing them up. I feel they're in the water. That's that's my that's my thing. I think the UFO bases are in the water underground. I mean, underwater. They're, so they're... I think it's literally pulling them, pulling them up. And, um, you know, Aquarius is an air sign. And what goes on? We see UFOs in the air. Right. So, yeah, there's there's all this really, really um, fascinating energy going on. And so wherever Jupiter and Taurus are in your personal chart. This is where you can see some action going on. Something, um, you know, you could get extremely, extremely creative, have intuitive hunches, have great ideas. Um, sudden changes can occur. Like if it's in your fourth house, that could mean a sudden move. It could mean any number of things happening. New people coming into your into your life suddenly. Unexpe well, if it's in the um, fifth or eighth house, it could be an unexpected pregnancy or, or birth, right? you know those yeah i know surprise pre <laughs> the pregnancy and birth cannot is energy right it's energy so you could birth a new idea is exactly. that correct as well exactly um, you could you could become pregnant so to speak with uh, ideas a new idea a business uh whatever whatever mm -hmm. or yeah. you could just get pregnant right now here's the the other side of it could be that some of our land could be in jeopardy okay um from rising seawater um, from wildfires, That's you know, right. so I'm going to expect it's going to be a really tough um, summer in California this year. I didn't um, even think about that. So it could be land in jeopardy from the border, from sea level rise, from fires, from earthquakes. It's fascinating because we get I get narrow minded about certain things, but you're really helping me see this energy can really manifest in so many different ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. And every individual is going to experience it differently. Okay. Unless you have the exact same chart, which never happens um, as somebody else. But I mean, you know, you, you could expect, I would expect maybe around that time or shortly following, there could be earthquakes somewhere. Um, that's not out of the realm of possibility, um, you know, and maybe followed by a tsunami or something like that. Seismic but, activity. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But the other good news is, see, there's always good for the bad, is we could f have innovations in growing food and, you know, creating wa water sources for the resources that are drying up. It's very, it's very technology oriented, which I'm not, which we've had this discussion before, but it's, it's a, just a period ushering in um, just some amazing, amazing new um, inventions and ideas and ways of doing things. And it can be government too. It can be our government. And I believe at some point in time, and this is not going to happen right away, that our our United States is going to be split up into regions. We yeah, will we've have... talked about this before. Yeah. I, I think it's a ways off. I mean, yes. what what do you think? And we'll I, you just dropped a bomb. So we have to talk about it a little bit because people can be like, wait, what, what? Yeah. Um, and so what timeline? Within the next 30 years. Okay. I, I'm kind of going 30. I, I'm going, yeah. I, maybe it's just my own ego that I can't process this, but I've thought about it a lot because you mentioned it to me twice. So what you see is, please correct me if I'm wrong. But what you see is um, the word the guides are using is an amalgamation of states. So you take the states, they're still states. And we we just draw regions, the southern region, the, the northeastern region, the middle region, the western region. Maybe that's what it is. And then those regions, the, 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 those regions have autonomy. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. Self-governing. Okay. Self-governing, so, but yeah. there, but we still have a constitution. We still yep. have we still have Washington D.C. We still have a president. Yep. It's just the way you're saying it is that these states could better prepare for, say, the South is going to have specific re specific things happen to it due to climate change. The yes. South is going to be experiencing a much different, very very different reaction to climate change than the Northeast is, than the middle, than the West. And so this way, 
what you're saying is that area can govern itself better. It can it can better use it, the resources. It can better understand its own needs. Is that correct? That is correct, because clearly the growing season up here in the Northeast is much different than in the Midwest or down South, right? Um, so, and the needs of the people are different. And this is why we're in so much, you know, agony and turmoil right now. The North people up here in the Northeast, uh, those of us up here, um, we, you can't really relate to people who live in the Rust Belt or people who live down south and what their needs are and what their feelings are about things, you know, and the same goes everywhere, West Coast, you know, Midwest, wherever it is, our needs are different. That's why we can't come to agreement on anything. And so what I envision is that there will be, there will still be a Washington DC, maybe it's in Omaha, who knows, I don't know, but there's still gonna be a center of government, okay? a center of government, but it's got, it's got, I'm seeing spokes that go out. And it's sort of like saying, okay, all these Northeast states or whoever wants is gonna belong up there, um, we're gonna give you so much money to concentrate on this. You know, in all these states over here, we're gonna give you so much money to concentrate on that. And it's gonna feel to the people like they're being better represented. Or better governed. And, that, and that's going to emanate from this Aquarius energy of we, the people, yeah. we want better representation and we're not feeling represented by Washington. Correct. So do you see governors of the states or do you see one governor of a territory? You know, I'm not really sure how it's all going to work. Nobody asked me. So, I, you know, I, I, they won't ask my opinion. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work. I just see that it's not working now. So you I mean, see that in like 30 years? About, I mean, what you're gonna see is a gradual, um, a, a gradual segue into something like this, okay? Different, something different. We couldn't do it now because the timing is not right. But when you get the other major planets, um, Uranus um, and Neptune changing signs, which I can't even go into right now because it's blow my my mind up but um you, you're gonna see that we're gonna we're gonna be more innovative we're gonna think of government different our currency is going to change it's not going to be bitcoin but it's going to be something different okay um the way we bank the way we grow our food you know um i think you're going to see a lot of what do they call it hydroponic food is that uh -huh. what they call it? Yeah, yeah you know okay. uh, you know and and the same thing um you know, obviously, if there's massive droughts, it's going to cause, you know, prices to go up because the cows don't have the grass to feed on. And, you know, I'm not a farmer, but I mean, I can figure that out. It would be a problem. So my my feeling is that we're just going to be sort of independent of each other, but connected. OK, and um, and it, it's going to make sense because it's a new world order. OK, that's what they just told me. It's a new world order. And um, the old ways, they're broken. They're totally broken. They're, they're broken beyond repair. We have to oh. we have to re envision. And that's it makes perfect sense. The guides have often said all last year, dissolution, dissolving, yes. dissolution, dissolution. And to become something new, you, you don't just change your clothes and become something new. You've got to really transmute. So I feel like work. this could have something to do with robotics. It could have something to do with uh, more robotic uh, farming, more robotic everything. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I think it also has something to do with climate change, with protecting the citizens, bringing the citizens, maybe retracting from certain areas and bringing them in centralized areas. And I think it has something to do with, I've, and the guides will not stop talking about this. So I'm probably going to be talking about it a little bit in the next couple of months. And that is that, Whatever that money is, that there's a name for it, and I can never remember it. But when the government just gives everybody a certain amount of money, period. FEMA? FEMA? Not FEMA, no, a, hmm. a, a, a check. You get a check oh, okay. from the government. If they have a name for it, every every single citizen gets a check from the government. It's not socialism. It's it's something uh, certain people get this depending on um whatever. I don't know what it the is. The need. Yeah. The need. And and so I think that. In a way, that's your bait. And, you know, they're testing this in different cities right now. There's certain cities that even in Houston, they're testing it. They want to see what people do with it. 
with the tests they've already done, people have spent it on living, on rent. Food. <laughs> they, they've yeah. spent it on necessities. Yeah, right. So, so then it's well spent. It's money that goes back into the economy anyway. So I think these are things we can't imagine right now. But what did she just talk about, you guys? Things we can't imagine. That's what she just talked about. Finding the Enigma machine. It saved Britain. Um, this this stuff is happening maybe right now in the minds of some kids that will end up being, you know, president. It, you know, you never know how this is going to bubble up. Well, it's also part of it. And, you know, this is where people are going to think I need to put on my tin hat and go sit in the corner. E.T. knowledge. No, okay? I agree. I agree with that, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, they're here. They're here. We know they're here. The government knows they're here. And, you know, how do you think we got technology for the stealth bomber exactly. and all these things? You know, um, the technology came from somewhere. Yeah. And so this is what I said about Uranus. It's unimagined yet. It's new. And by the way, Uranus would rule extraterrestrial, you know, the air oh. and Aquarius. And, you know, from my understanding, the majority are very benevolent and they're here to help us. Okay. Yeah. Um, so not to fear folks, you, you know, that's a whole other issue. That that's a whole other issue. And I just yeah. want to add healing. They're going to come here to help us heal ourselves. Yeah. Um, I feel like, and, and I feel like they came in the fifties, sixties, seventies, and they gave us technology. And I feel like that technology was usurped. It wasn't given to the people. It was Correct. kept for the for the corporations. The corporations got the greed. They got the technology. Here we are in Aquarius. They're going to come back and they're going to give it to the people. I feel like we're going to have downloads about how to heal ourselves. We're going to have aha moments about creating some new uh, thing that you can't imagine. Maybe it's a, a way to create free energy for everybody. Because I feel like those are the two things they want to talk about all the time is we should be able to heal ourselves and we should have free energy. We sh we have the crystals. We have the we have everything we need to have free energy. And right. I really feel like that's what they're going to come down here and they're going to help us get. And then if we have our own our own energy and we can heal ourselves, the government has to change. Everything has to change. Imagine that for yourself for a moment. Yeah. Imagine the deep changes that would happen. And when they came here, when did they come here? Right after we dropped the atom that's right. bomb. That's right? exactly right. They came here to prevent us from blowing up this planet. Exactly. Okay? And they struck a deal with somebody, who, you exactly. know, whoever was in charge um, and said, hey, listen, you know, we can't let you do this. So we're not going to take our tasers and zap you if you guys, you know, let us help you to um, create technologies that's not going to destroy this planet because we need this planet. This planet is important in the universe. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's true, folks. I mean. You can believe it or not, but this is, you're going to see it happen. You will yeah, see, it happen. see it happen. You'll see with it with your own eyes. Absolutely. And, and so we, we, a lot of us are going to be out here telling you not to freak out that that's, that's our next role. I think exactly. that's my next role, your next role. And, and, and I'm the one who normally would be freaking out, but, but I will be out here apparently, according to my new information I've gotten, uh, telling you guys it's okay. So let's move on. Where else are we going in this crazy uh, conversation? <laughs> it's so enlightening. <laughs> I know there's so much to talk about, right? I know, you know, I, know. Um, I wanted to touch on the Biden Trump. Okay. And just tell you guys, here's the deal. I know that a lot, there are some astrologers out there who do say, oh, Trump's going to win because he has Uranus and Jupiter up in his 10th house right on his sun. That's a winning aspect. Okay. It can be. It can be. I mean, when I first saw it, I went, oh, no. <laughs> you know, but you got to look and see what's going on. Okay. I'm here to tell you, those of you who want sanity to prevail and are done with all of this, understand Uranus is at the very top of Trump's chart. It's on a very sensitive point called his midheaven, which is his reputation in the world, his standing, his career. It is making a very challenging aspect to his ascendant and his Mars. 
not good for somebody who wants to be president again. And this is a long-term aspect. It's not just going to hit on election day and go away. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying there's no way he's going to be, be able to govern being president if he makes it that far, um, you know, with that Uranus Mars square and Uranus ascendant. Now, Jupiter and, Plu and Uranus at that time are going to be in his 10th house, right? Now, Jupiter is ruler of the ninth house, which is travel. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he is still with us to see him pack his little bags and try to scurry off somewhere, okay? That's a possibility. It's a potential. And that's what astrology is all about. It's about potentials. So um, if he loses, he's not going to hang around or he's not going to try. I don't know how he would do it with Secret Service hanging all over him, but, you know, he has a plan. I don't know. But um, the, the problem is, I'm, I'm looking at this, he won't have any money. Um, so it would have to be someone who bankrolls him like another another country, you know, Saudi Arabia. I don't think Putin is going to be strong enough at that time. Putin's on his way out. It's only a matter of time. Um, but um, he's not going to be president, folks. He's not. OK, so those of you who are panicking, um, it's not going to happen. And Joe Biden's chart is just awesome. OK. Now, Joe, Joe, yes, Joe's old. Okay, let's just say it. I'm old. He's old. We're all getting older, right? I'm looking at my, my chart for him here. But his aspects for the election are so good, okay? They support all those intuitive planets in his 12th house. His sun, his Mercury, his Venus, and his Mars are all supported, okay? That's winning. And that's because he can relate to the people what the people need right now. They need that calm. They need that wisdom. They need a kinder, gentler president, right? And yeah, Joe is, I, I hate to say it, and I don't want people not to vote for him for this because he is going to have some health issues, but nothing that's going to take him out, okay? It's possible, and, and, you know, it is possible. We're looking at Uranus, so anything is possible. It's hard to predict. He could... Um, maybe leave after a couple of years due to health complications. But Kamala, leave the presidency or leave the planet? Leave the presidency. He's not okay. going anywhere physically. Okay. okay. No, Joe's not. Um, but he's going to have, you know, issues that older people have. Look, Trump's only three years younger than him, yeah. for goodness sake, yeah. you know, and in terrible condition. So, you know, don't panic. Um, you know, He's going to have some stuff that older people have, and he's going to take care of it. And it's going to come up. And yes, it's it's Uranus is in there. So it's going to be unexpected. And people are going to go, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, don't panic. It's all going to be fine. All right. Joe, um, Joe is what we need right now. I we agree. really we really need it now. And, and if and if he did have to bow out of the presidency due to ill health, Kamala is there. And you know what? You know, she, flies don't sit on Kamala very long. She's she'll take over and she'll do what needs to be done. Unfortunately, during that time, what's going to be happening is we're going to have the con the congressmen who uh, were very naughty on January sixth being prosecuted. And what unfortunately, time? did you say a uh, time frame within within the next one to two years? Okay, one to two years. Yes, that's exactly okay. That that all that is exactly everything I've seen. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So because yeah, and so you're saying during that time we might be a little destabilized because Jack Smith may be working with these Congress people uh, to bring them to a court, uh, to a court of law. Correct. And I mean, don't forget Fonnie Willis too. I mean, some of the 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 co-conspirators. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know don't count Fonnie out. She's fine. Not, she's not going anywhere. Um, she, th th this whole thing is just, it's just a bunch of nothing. Um, it's so a distraction, she, but it's, it's a, a distraction, distraction we didn't need. It's, yeah, it exactly. And we didn't need. But Kamala, she's, she's a former district attorney. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's not going to take any stuff, you yes, know? Mm -hmm. So she will be very strong, like her or not. She will do what needs to be done. And she's not okay. going to put up with, she's not going to put up with stuff. That's no malarkey. Just, no malarkey at all. So not to worry. Putting Joe in means that you are 
cognizant of his maturity, his wisdom, his experience, or you got the other guy. You figure it out, you know? I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer. It, it, it really is. But, um, yeah, and, and, and during this time, during the election, Trump's got – he, he's he's got anxiety, escapism, self-destructive. He's he's just going to self-destruct if he's still with us, okay? Because he won't be able to take it because there's no there's nowhere else to go other than right. away, you know. Right. And again, that's a possibility. He could run, you know. Jupiter is on his son, um, and you know, and and this is going to be a bitter pill for him to swallow because he has such he thinks he's going to win this, and he thinks that's this is going to solve all his problems. If Jupiter's on his son, doesn't that mean like ego, like yeah, uh, overinflated like, ego? Normally, that would be a good thing to have Jupiter on your son, wouldn't it? Yes, if except you except for that it, it, it expands whatever's going on. So if you've got ninety-two indictments, <laughs> it can right, expand right. them. And what's happening? Neptune at that time is still making an extremely challenging aspect to his son. So you've got okay. Jupiter on there. Whatever Jupiter touches, it expands. Okay. Honestly, to my my I take on indictments. this. Right. But my take on this is his mental capacity is just going to go yeah. downhill so yeah. much. I agree. That, um, you know. Oh, and I, that's I mean, the Neptune. The mental capacity clarity yeah. is Neptune. The yeah. Neptune is also there. So Jupiter could expand that problem. Yeah. So yeah, and and you know, Jupiter and Neptune both are very spiritual um, planets. And here's the deal: if you have not been walking the correct spiritual path, you're going to get a big slap on the wrist from the universe. Okay, and so you know, we have Saturn, which is the great corrector. I mean, everyone, <laughs> Saturn can really be tough. He's a tough taskmaster, and Saturn is also going to be making some really harsh aspects to all of his planets in his 10th house. So he got a lot going on. Okay. That's, that's not, not going to be favorable. So I'm just trying to put everybody's mind at ease, unless you are a mega person, in which case you're probably not watching us right now. You're anyway. probably not watching us. <laughs> if you are watching this, you've already had a heart attack and you probably yeah. called 911. So, and you they know, got I your tin hat okay. on. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're okay wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing getting off of um, unless you have any questions about. Trump no, 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 no. Um, the royal family, they're really taking some hits right now. The royal family is. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah we see that. Don't yeah. we? Wow. Charles has cancer. I don't know what's happening with Catherine, but she's really sick. OK, Catherine, that's Kate, right? She's Kate. not well, yeah. you guys. Not she well. isn't. And, uh, you know, they said it wasn't a hysterectomy. So I'm thinking it has to be, it has to be something like pancreas or it feels, yeah, something really bad, right? Colon, pancreas. To me, it feels like, to me, it feels like feminine. It does feel like. Well, oh, I think she's had a hysterectomy. I think they did do a hysterectomy oh, oh, on her. Oh, okay, okay. They no, did do I, I have no inner knowledge of that. You know, I'm okay, just saying right. my... My intuitive impression when I look at this is I feel yeah. that she has had a hysterectomy. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. But it but, but it was uh there's something more. There there's there something is. else going on that maybe they found when they were doing it's not good. I, I it, don't know that I it's not good. It's not and, good. And um so let's see, that's William. I'm I'm looking at her chart right now. Um so Kate, Pluto happens to be um Sorry, just lost my train of thought there for a minute. Um, it's in her sixth house of health. So that can be really touchy, okay. touch and What's go. What's Pluto again? Remind me what Pluto does again. Pluto transforms. It's death and rebirth. It's oh. transformation and change. Oh, shit. It can really shake your world. Now, the sixth house is the house of health, but it's also the house of work. This could also mean she's not going to be able to go out and do a yeah. whole bunch of public appearances yeah. yes. also. I agree with that. I agree you with know? that. I agree um, with that. Yes. But it is going to be making some very harsh aspects in her chart over the next year. Okay. I just transform. I don't think she's ever going to be the same, you guys. She, I don't, she isn't. I don't think she's ever going to be the same. 
I think she, she should have just thinner, wanner, you know, like wan meaning pale. Uh, she's just not going to look great. And for that reason, too, she might stay out of the public eye. She might, but she may be forced into it. If Charles has to abdicate oh, I forgot. because That's right. of his cancer diagnosis. That's right. And now this is what I'm looking at. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction coming up. It's elevated in both Catherine and William's chart, right at their midheaven, which brings them out in front of the people, which means a career change, okay? Yeah. Now, I don't think it's going to happen immediately, but I think what's going to happen is Charles is going to say to William, you're going to have to take over. And yeah. William is like, I'm not ready yet, you know? So I think what there's going to be is a slow transition, but Charles is just not, he's just, I think he's going to be okay, but, I mean, I don't think that he's going to be able to carry on as king. Yeah, it's going to be too much for him, I you know? Agree. And, I, and, and I, think, I always saw that. Even when the queen was was crossing, I, I didn't see Charles as king for long. Right. I right. never saw him for, as king for long. But I it, there's this long convalescing kind of thing. It's weird because his energy matches Kate's to me. This long, it, 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 and draw yeah. that illness convalescing thing. Their yeah. energy is very similar. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, William is very worried about his wife. He's extremely yeah. worried about her. And yeah. the whole thing is they're they're all kind of like, you know, this change is going to happen sooner than what we thought it was going to. What are we going to do? We have a sick princess who's going to be queen. We have a, a sick king. We have William. And he's like being torn in all different directions right now. He's got his children to think about. And that's the other thing with Kate. She is very concerned about her children, how this is going to affect her them. And this mimics and Diana. This mimics Diana, does. the potential of, of, of my God, I lost my mother and my kid's going to lose their mother. Exactly. They're, this kind of a weird karmic. And it's also weird that Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth lived healthy for freaking ever. You know what I, I mean? Know. Took Took over during the war, you know, like kind of lived forever this very equanimity right like she was the equanimity queen and now one big shake up after another after another for not only the royal family but for britain for leaving for brexit they for been everybody through quite a bit as a yeah. country you know and and here it is again pluto and aquarius you know and uranus jupiter big shake up shaking you up to wake you up you know so, um, and also as if that weren't enough, um, they have the um, solar eclipse, okay? That's going to be interestingly happening in both Catherine and William's ninth house. Now, the ninth house isn't traditionally um, monarchy, okay? But this indicates that being, excuse me, it, it's travel, OK, and and I'm feeling like their travel is going to be curtailed. They can't they can't represent the monarchy the way that they they want to and feel that they should and the way they've been groomed to. And it's taking place in Charles's 10th house of reputation, career. Um, and so that means he's probably going to abdicate within the next six months. I, I agree with I totally agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I, totally agree with that. I could be wrong, but he certainly knows he's going to be OK. Yeah. Yeah. And and the Uranus Jupiter conjunction is opposing his son. It's an opposition to his son. It's tough. OK, it's a tough change that he has to make personally, a tough decision that he has to make personally to sort of step aside go out of the limelight and sort of, you know, so. You can see how the astrology is just like really connecting in all of their charts and telling a story. And I worry about the monarchy, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think also, is it Camilla? Camilla um, might have some health problems too that Charles is worried about. And he's worried about leaving her. And, um, you know, She's not the most popular queen in, you know, in history, you know, what will that mean to her? He has two sons who are fighting with each other and not speaking. He has a daughter-in-law, would-be queen, who's very ill. So lots and lots of stuff going on with them. But um, I do believe 
that we're going to see some major announcements coming out of the uh, royal family um, this year. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So, so yeah, lots of lots of stuff going on, Susan. Lots of stuff going on, and I think we're probably right around an hour. I don't know. But yeah. uh, that is fascinating. And I find it fascinating how I read the energy and the energy more often than not matches the astrology. I don't really understand the astrology, but I understand the energy. And um, so that's why I like having astrologers on. It's like, oh, that's how that's happening. That's why I feel that way. Um, so if you guys, you guys saw what an amazing astrologer Lorraine is. And what I really like, and I think that this is the new thing going into twenty the 2020s, 2030s, is that taking this very complex, archaic, arcane, whatever, uh, you know, methodology and making it understandable to the masses, back to that age of Aquarius, right? So that's what I really love that you do, Lorraine, is you make it understandable for us, right? You really, yeah. and you really have this teaching energy. And I, I really hope that you, you know, maybe, maybe you'll consider having your own YouTube channel to teach us this stuff, or maybe you'll consider doing some classes. I don't know uh, what your future plans are, but hopefully maybe one of those future plans is to come back on my channel. At some I time. definitely want to come back on your channel. I love working with you. I love the energy and um, I love, you know, I love astrology. You can tell it's been part of me for 40 years, but unfortunately I had to work and make money for all those 40 years. So I didn't get to do it as much as I wanted to. And I feel like now I have an opportunity to do that. So anytime you want me back, Susan, I would love to come back. Oh yeah. We have more to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. We There's do. a lot to talk We've about. We've only and scratched the surface. Yes, that is so true. So if you guys are interested in a reading from Lorraine, that her email address will be down in the description below. Um, I have a feeling she's going to be a little busy and I, you know, just send your email if you're interested. That's all I can say. Other than that, there's a wealth of information for you here. Leave us a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Uh, perhaps you have a question that Lorraine can answer and Lorraine will jump in the comments maybe and answer a question here and there. Uh, if you ask me an astrology question, I'm not going to be able to answer you. <laughs> but I can tell you what the energy is. That's about all I can do. Thanks, everybody, so much for joining us today. I really hope you enjoyed this and got something from it. And take really good care of yourselves. We'll see you again real soon, right back here on my channel. All right. Bye, Thanks you guys. Bye bye. For entertainment purposes only.